afterward. Rightly Dividing 101 Appendix Why I Use the King James Bible The Faith of Jesus About the Author Other Books by Marianne Manley Past Genesis to Mid-Acts The Fall of Israel Occurred in Acts 7 In the past, most Gentiles had no hope. Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Ephesians 2 verses 11 and 12 God creates heaven and earth. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1 From the beginning God's focus was on the earth and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 2 Both heaven and earth are organized into levels of governmental authority. There are thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers in both spheres, for by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him, and for him. Colossians 1 verse 16 Satan falls. God had an adversary, Lucifer, the anointed cherub that covereth. Ezekiel 28 verse 14. Lucifer had an important job. He was perfect until evil was found in him, and he became Satan. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in the. -E. Ezekiel 28 verse 15. Lucifer is Satan. Isaiah 14 verse 12. Lucifer means light bearer. Satan may be light on the outside, but inside he is dark. Lucifer said, I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14 verse 14. The reason for Satan's long warfare against God is that he wants to rule and be worshipped as possessor of heaven and earth. Sometime before he appeared in the Garden of Eden, Satan was cast out of heaven to the earth. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Luke 10 verse 18. Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. We live in the present evil world, Galatians 1 verse 4. The world system is organized on the principle of force, greed, selfishness, ambition, and sinful pleasure, and is a result of fallen man's captivity to Satan and his own sinful fleshly nature. Satan had to leave God's presence, and one-third of the angels followed him out of the third heaven. The second heavens became not clean, Job 15 verse 15. The sky around the earth is the first heaven. Satan also became the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 verse 2. Adam and Eve, 4000 BC. God made Adam and Eve and gave them dominion over the earth and God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, Genesis 1 verses 26 to 27. The triune God made mankind so that they could join in their loving fellowship, so that God could love them, and that they would willingly love and worship Him in return. Adam and Eve were to reign over the earth, bear children, set up a kingdom and take dominion, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1 verse 28. God gave one rule for Adam to freely and lovingly obey. God was very clear. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verses 16 and 17 The Fall of Mankind Satan Targets Eve Satan continued his plan of evil against God by questioning God's word, and the woman subtracts and adds to God's word. Satan's five-part strategy against the word of God still used today. 1. Question it. 2. Subtract from it. 3. Add to it. 4. Water it down. 5. Deny it. Stay with God's pure word. The KJV Bible. 
Satan, through the shining serpent, with one question to Eve, succeeded in beguiling, tricking, her. By his subtlety, Satan achieved the fall of Adam and the fall of the human race. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, hath God said, question God's word, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Genesis 3 verse 1 And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat, she left out, freely, of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, she added, Touch, lest ye die. Genesis 3 verses 2 and 3 The shining serpent, acting on behalf of Satan, that old serpent, Revelation 12 verse 9, lied. He tricked Eve into thinking that she and Adam could be as gods, just like Satan wanted to be like the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Notice that God's word was changed by both the serpent and Eve. God has said several times in the Bible that no one should add or subtract from his word. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 See Proverbs 30 verse 6 and Revelation 22 verses 18 and 19. Satan lied to Eve, denying God's word. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, Satan lied, that is the opposite of what God said, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Satan enticed her with the same desire that caused his fall, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3 verses 4 to 5 Eve fell for the lie in three ways. Compare with 1 John 2 verse 16 And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, pride of life, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Genesis 3 verse 6 Mankind forfeited their dominion of the earth, which passed to Satan, the god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 Mankind was separated from God, and all creation fell into a sinful state. Romans 5 12, 8 22. God had a problem, how can he remain just and redeem mankind while allowing them free will? The Promise of the Redeemer God promised that the Redeemer would come from the seed of the woman, speaking to the serpent God said, and I will put enmity, constant conflict, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3 verse 15 Would God be able to use Satan's evil, to find out who really loved him willingly? Immediately, Adam and Eve realized they were naked and sewed fig leaves together to try to cover their nakedness, spiritual death. They had most likely been clothed with light before they transgressed God's command. Psalms 104 verse 2. Their light went out. Their effort to become righteous by covering themselves is a picture of mankind trying to be righteous by their own works, religion. Clothes made from leaves do not last and are not very sturdy. God killed some innocent animals to cover them with skins. This illustration depicts the necessity of shedding innocent blood for sin. We need to be covered with God's righteousness to be accepted by holy God. The scarlet thread of the redeeming blood is a continual theme throughout the Bible, culminating in the perfectly satisfying sacrifice of God the Son upon the cross. Romans 3 verses 24 to 26, 1 Peter 1 verses 18 to 19. Sadly, Adam and Eve had to leave the Garden of Eden, so they would not eat of the tree of life and live forever in their fallen state. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. Genesis 3 verse 24 Just as God had said Adam and Eve began to die as soon as they sinned. They not only died spiritually when they disobeyed God's word, but also started dying physically. Adam was 930 years old when he finally died. Adam and Eve also lost their face-to-face -face fellowship that they enjoyed with the Lord God in the garden. Besides spiritual and physical death, there is a death called the second death. This is where unbelievers go after they are judged at the great white throne judgment. This second death occurs when death and hell are cast into the 
Lake of Fire Adam and Eve avoided that death because they believed what God said. Adam demonstrated his faith when he called his wife Eve, the mother of all living, Genesis 3 verse 20. Adam believed life would come through Eve as God had said. Eve showed her faith when she thought Cain may be the Redeemer, Genesis 4 verse 1. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Instead, Cain turned out to be a type of Antichrist, he murdered his faithful brother, Abel. Adam and Eve became the first believers destined to be resurrected and to enter the eternal kingdom on the earth. Believers today have a different destiny, as you will discover in the present section ahead. However, Adam and Eve passed on their spiritual death and sin nature to all mankind. The glorified Lord in heaven revealed this to Paul. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5 verse 12. The flood, about 2400 BC. Satan pollutes the seed of the woman with fallen angels to hinder the coming of the Redeemer. The sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear children to them. Genesis 6 verse 4. Man is evil continually. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6 verse 5. Only one man, Noah, remained blameless and his seed line was not polluted. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6 verse 8. God wants to start over. And God looked upon the earth, and, behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. Genesis 6 verses 12 and 13. God decides to send a worldwide flood and commands Noah make thee an ark. Genesis 6 verse 14. God decides to send a worldwide flood and commands Noah make thee an ark. Genesis 6 verse 14. God decides to send a worldwide flood and commands God floods the entire earth. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. Genesis 7 verses 19 and 20. After the flood, God commanded the people to spread out and fill the earth. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. Genesis 9 verse 1. The Tower of Babel, about 2200 BC, Satan counters God's command at the Tower of Babel. Again people became wicked, disobeyed God, refused to spread out, made their own religion, and a tower to heaven. They did not believe nor obey God, and the whole earth was of one language, and of one speech, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. They said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Genesis 11 verses 1 to 4 L1 The DA, the Tower of Babel By Peter Bruegel the Elder, 1563 Because man tried to be gods, and make his own religion at the Tower of Babel, God confused their languages, making the people divide into nations. So the people spread out over the earth. Gentiles means nations. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Genesis 11 verse 9. One day, God will rule from the city of the king, Jerusalem, for a thousand years. What happened to the Gentiles? This is where the Lord God gave the Gentiles up, hoping to return and to save them later. Paul by revelation of Jesus Christ explains this in Romans chapter 1, colon 18-32. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Romans 1 verse 21. Romans 1 verse 24. 
God also gave them up to uncleanness. Romans 1 verse 26. God gave them up unto vile affections. Romans 1 verse 28. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. The condition for the Gentiles was sad. Wherefore remember, that ye being in time past Gentiles, having no hope, and without God in the world. Ephesians 2 verses 11 and 12. The Call of Abraham, 2000 BC. This time, instead of destroying the wicked people of the earth with a flood, God chose to make his own nation from one man, Abraham. God promised Abraham, a Gentile, now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, separate yourself, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land, Israel, that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And I N T H E shall all families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. The Abrahamic Covenant. God's promises to Abraham, a land, a people, a blessing, forever, Genesis 13 verse 15, God intended to reconcile all nations to himself through Israel. The nation Israel was to be a channel of blessing to all people of the earth, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Genesis 22 verse 18. During the prophetic program, there is hope for any Gentile who shows their faith in Israel's God by blessing them, for example, Ruth. Abraham believed God and received his imputed righteousness, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 15 verse 6. Asterisk note, further, and more advanced revelation about the righteousness which God imputed to Abraham's account, and other believers, is described by Paul in Romans chapter 4. God promised, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God, Genesis 17 verses 6 to 8. God instituted circumcision as a token for a sign of the Abrahamic covenant. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep, between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised, it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Genesis 17 verses 10 and 11 Because God is all-knowing, he predicted the length of Israel's captivity in Egypt, for hundred years. The author of the supernatural Bible is God. Its origin is extraterrestrial. And he, God, said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, Egypt, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Genesis 15 verse 13. Abraham showed his faith in God's ability to raise up his son Isaac when he obeyed God and offered him up. God stopped him after he knew Abraham would have gone through with it. However, at the right time, Romans 8 verse 32, God would not spare his own son. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Genesis 22 verse 8, Christ was to be sacrificed on Mount Moriah in a way similar to Abraham's offering of Isaac. But, as we will learn, Satan wanted to prevent that. God was not surprised because he knows the thoughts and intents of his creatures. By faith Abraham offered up his only begotten son, in a figure, type. Hebrews 11 verses 17 to 19. God changed the name of Isaac's son Jacob to Israel. Israel had twelve sons. Moses, 1500 BC. Abraham's grandson Israel and his twelve sons moved to Egypt. The twelve sons became twelve tribes. Eventually, they were made slaves in that land. After four hundred years, God led his people out of Egypt using Moses, having demonstrated his power to them through many signs in Egypt the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt, under the hand of Moses. Numbers 33, 1. 
God brought Israel through the Red Sea on their way to the Promised Land. God commanded Moses to build a tabernacle after the pattern, shoot thee in the mount, Exodus 25 verse 40, Hebrews 8 verse 5. Since God knew that Israel could not keep his law, a holy place was given where the priest took the blood of the animal sacrifice to cover the sin of the people. God passed over their sins anticipating Christ's perfect blood sacrifice, Romans 3 verse 25. Through Moses God formed the nation of Israel in the wilderness. God instituted the law, Old Covenant or Testament, with Israel, separating them from all other nations, Leviticus 20 verses 24 and 26, Deuteronomy 4 verses 6 to 8, 7 colon 6, 26 colon 19. Israel was to be a kingdom of priests who would be a channel of blessing, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. Isaiah 61 verse 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, to the Gentiles to save them. The Old Covenant law uses the if-then principle. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar, particular, or unique. Possession, treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and why ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. Priests were required to be ceremonially washed, baptized, with water. And Aaron and his sons washed them, the priests, with water. Exodus 29 verse 4. Giving Israel the Law. Through Moses, God made a nation out of Israel. God led his people out of Egypt and said, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Exodus 4 verse 22. During the Exodus God gave Israel the Ten Commandments, the Law, through Moses on Mount Sinai. However, while Moses was on the mountain, Israel's faith failed. They made an idol, a god they could see, a golden calf, sta. Then, when they were about to enter the Promised Land, Israel refused to believe that God could help them be victorious in conquering the Promised Land. So the Lord made Israel wander in the wilderness for forty years until the unbelieving generation died off. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. Numbers 32, 13 God gave the children of those who wandered in the wilderness a chance to believe. Through his spokesman Moses, God renewed his promise to set Israel above and apart from other nations. They were to be his special people from whom the seed of the woman would come. God reaffirmed the distinction between Israel and all other people. God set Israel above all nations. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6 Faith is necessary, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11 6 a.m. Israel's sacrifices and offerings had to be accompanied by faith. God, through Moses, reviewed the law again to the next generation of Israelites. Moses retells the facts. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them unto me, Moses. Deuteronomy 10 verse 4. Y 4148979 GH 414-24-7 by 4. U. Y 40411. Moses received the Ten Commandments Moses promises that their days in the land will be like heaven on earth that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth, Deuteronomy 11 verse 21. Christ later reveals to Paul the purpose of the Ten Commandments. No human can keep them, instead, they show mankind their need for a Redeemer. For by the law is the knowledge of sin, Romans 3 verse 20. Since no human can live up to God's standard in the Ten Commandments Israel should have said, We cannot keep the law, we need help Lord. 
but instead, their pride and our pride thinks we can keep the law in our flesh. The Kingdom is Promised David King of Israel, 1000 BC The seed line continues through David. God promised King David that his descendants would inherit an eternal kingdom. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. 2 Samuel 7 verse 16 The Davidic Covenant King David Satan continues to attack the royal seed. Satan continued to attack the seed of the woman. Saul had a satanic hatred for David. At one point in Israel's history only one son remained of the seed royal of King David's descendants, because Athaliah killed all her grandchildren except for Josh. But when Athaliah the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Josh the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. 2 Chronicles 22 verses 10 and 11 God promised to deliver his children, Israel, from bondage to Satan. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Isaiah 49 verse 25 God's people go into captivity. The nation Israel continued to disobey God. They worshipped idols and false gods. First, the northern tribes were taken captive, and then the southern. When the tribes were released from the countries of their captivity, they returned to their land, rebuilt the wall around Jerusalem and the temple. Daniel, in captivity, gives Israel the timeline. While in captivity, Daniel the prophet of God, about 600 BC, wrote this prophecy, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Daniel 2 verse 44 Nebuchadnezzar's Statue Daniel 2 Rock Jesus Christ Gold Babylonian Empire Silver Medo-Persian Empire Bronze Greek Empire Iron Roman Empire Iron and Clay Modern Powers Another prophecy, I saw in the night visions. One like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages, should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Daniel 7 verse 13. In Daniel chapters 2 and 7, the timeline of the kingdoms of the earth is given until the coming of Messiah, to set up his kingdom when the times of the Gentiles are over, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, Luke 21 verse 24. Creation Flood Abraham Crossing Jordan Law Moses Genesis Time passed Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 12 Davidic C.O.V. Elijah Elisha, Times of the Gentiles, 1 and 2 Chronicles, Y.R.S. I, Captivity Assy Slash Baby, 560 years, 490 years, 49,400 years years, I.S.A., Je, Lam, Esk, Dan, Hose, Joel, Amos, Oba, John, Mike. 3. Israel, the circumcision, nigh unto God. The law serves as a middle wall of partition. Gentiles uncircumcision, far off, without God. Exodus Josh. Judd. Sam KGS, 2 KGS, 12 KGS, 2 KGS EZR, the Leviticus, to Ruth 16 12 nay silence 1032 1701 Eastern Standard Time of God Sam, to to 1031 to to 1 to 16 1 KGS 22, 16 20 25, colon 30 Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Numbers Deuteronomy 12, Na, Hab, Zeph, 34 years. Hag, Zech, Mal John the Baptist, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Twelve Apostles, C.H. The Day of Pentecost. Christ reappears to Paul. 
Matthew Acts Mark Luke, John. But now, Ephesians 2 verse 13, Dispensation of the Grace of God, 4444, Mystery of Christ, is revealed. The Church, the Body of Christ, both one, one new man, now being formed Romans. 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. 1 and 2 Thessalonians. 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Christ raptures church. 7 years, to come, Ephesians 2 verse 7, the Lord's, day of wrath 5, returns. To Israel, kingdom of heaven is set up. Israel's program is resumed and fulfilled. Hebrews James 1 and 2 Peter 1.2 and 3 John Jude The Revelation Daniel gave his people a timeline of events leading up to the first coming of Messiah and then the kingdom which are recorded in Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27 by a series of weeks. 70 weeks are determined, 7 times 70 is equal to 490 years, Daniel 9 verse 24, 7 weeks, 7 x 7 dash 49 years, from the command to rebuild Jerusalem and the wall, then 434, 400 years of silence, then 34 years, until Messiah came riding into Jerusalem, 7 x 7 plus 62 x 7 equals 49 plus 434 a total of 483 years equals 69 weeks. Now only one more week, the seven-year tribulation, is left to fulfill all 490 years. God's secret will explain why there is a gap between the 483 years and the last seven years, known as Jacob's trouble mentioned in Jeremiah 30 verse 7. 400 years of silence. Then there were 400 years of silence a famine of, the words of the Lord, Amos 8 verse 11. Meanwhile, Satan had been calculating the time the Redeemer would come to Israel and had gone ahead spreading disease, evil spirits, and false religious teaching, man's rituals. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus Christ begins his earthly ministry, John the Baptist, 30 AD. The silence was broken by one crying in the wilderness and preparing the way for the king. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, Greek for Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Matthew 3 verse 3 God the Father sent John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. John 1 verse 6 John made the purpose of his baptism clear in John 1 verse 31. that he should be manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. John the Baptist prepared Israel for the kingdom. The king arrived at the perfect time prophesied in Daniel 9 verses 24 to 27. The time had come and their king, Jesus, the Messiah, was in their midst. John preached, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, within reach, Matthew 3 verse 2. The remnant of Israel, who believed they were destined to be a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, came out to the wilderness, confessing their sins, Matthew 3 verse 6, Leviticus 26 verse 40, and to be baptized so that they die not, Exodus 30 verse 21. The law and the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it, Luke 16 verse 16. John the Baptist pointed Jesus out to Israel. However, the kingdom was not the only thing that was at hand, so too was the wrath. John warned Israel of the wrath to come, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come, the tribulation? Matthew 3 verse 7 The prophet spoke of things prophesied since the world began. John's father Zacharias filled with the Holy Ghost, prophesied concerning the coming Redeemer, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, Luke 1 verses 68 to 70. John the Baptist was the son of a priest, so he was a priest by birth. 
he preached in the wilderness, not temple to avoid the generation of vipers. John the Baptist was to baptize with water those who believed that God would keep his word to his people, making them a kingdom of priests. But he also came to identify their king. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch at I am not worthy to unloose. John 1 verses 26 and 27. The way to go from being part of the apostate nation into the believing remnant was faith demonstrated by water baptism, Numbers 8 colon 7. John prepared the way for Jesus the Messiah of Israel and identified him to Israel. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1 verse 29. John bear record that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not, but he. That sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, and bear record that this is the Son of God, John 1 verses 32 to 34. John the Baptist and Jesus Christ were six months apart in age, and related. The angel told Mary, the mother of Jesus, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, Luke 1 verse 36. Jesus the promised seed of the woman. The law, not grace, was in effect when God the Son was born in Bethlehem. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Galatians 4 verse 4 The Holy Ghost was involved in the making of the baby, not a human man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Luke 1 verse 35 Paul confirmed that Jesus Christ is the seed. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3 verse 16 Jesus Christ fulfilled many prophecies, he was born of a virgin, Isaiah 7 verse 14, in Bethlehem, Micah 5 verse 2, of the lineage of David, Matthew 1, and Luke 3. He came to reign, for unto us, Israel, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9 verse 6. Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. He finished the work given to him by his Father. He began his ministry at the age of 30 and chose 12 disciples. Matthew 10 verses 1 to 4. The first coming of the King of the Jews, 33 or 34 AD asterisk. Asterisk, it is interesting that the calendar does not include a year zero, 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 zero. Jesus declared himself to be the King of the Jews, the promised Messiah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy King cometh unto thee, he is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Zechariah 9 verse 9. His triumphal entry into Jerusalem was prophesied. This is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118 verse 24. He came to redeem his people, dead and alive believers, to save them from their sins. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people, Israel, from their sins. Matthew 1 verse 21. So that his people could also rise from the grave in the kingdom and live with him. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Job 19 verses 25 to 27. This is the resurrection of life, John 5 verse 29, Jesus spoke of, also known as the first resurrection, Revelation 20 verses 5 and 6, of the kingdom on earth believers. 
Who did Jesus come to redeem? Jesus came to save the lost sheep of Israel. He preached the gospel of the earthly kingdom. Jesus told the Syrophoenician woman, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15 verse 24. Christ's earthly ministry is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. To the nation of Israel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15 verse 24, KJV. For 3,112 years, Jesus sent Paul. The reason Jesus confined his ministry to Israel was that they were to be the channel of blessing to the whole world. In order for Israel to be the channel of blessing, they had to be saved first. Jesus knew this and said, Salvation is of the Jews, John 4 verse 22. Sadly, John the Baptist was beheaded, Mark 6 verses 24 to 28, by Herod, but the Jews did nothing to stop him. Satan probably thought maybe I can get Jesus, also. What gospel did Jesus preach? Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. He healed everyone perfectly. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying the time of Daniel's timeline is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Mark 1 verses 14 and 15 And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 4 verse 23 And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Matthew 9 verse 35 Jesus commissioned the twelve, gave them sign gifts, and told them to only preach to the house of Israel. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give. Matthew 10 verses 5 to 8 Jesus told his disciples that he would return before they could finish preaching the gospel all over Israel. Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel, till the Son of Man be come. Matthew 10 verse 23 Why has this not happened? Why did the twelve not finish preaching to all Israel about their kingdom and king? Because as we shall discover Israel has been blinded and cast away for a season. Their prophesied earthly kingdom was postponed, interrupted, and put on hold in Acts 15, Romans 11 verses 7 and 15, 25. But this is getting ahead of the story, so let us return to it. Halfway through his ministry, Jesus knowing that his nation had rejected him, saying that his power is from Satan, and that he must go to the cross, begins to speak in parables so only believers will understand him. Sadly, Jesus was crucified by the Jews, then answered all the people, and said, His blood be on us, the Jews, and on our children. Matthew 27 verse 25. But this was the only way to give his spirit to Peter's and Paul's group. The Jews were looking for a king to rescue them physically from their Roman captors. They did not understand that they also needed to be set free from their own sins and their captivity to Satan. No man can enter into a strong man's house, Satan's, and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man by the death for sins, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and then he will spoil his house, take back captive Israel. Mark 3 verse 27 it was necessary to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. I said, If ye believe not that I am he, Messiah the King, ye shall die in your sins. John 8 verse 24 On the cross, Jesus called out Satan, He, God the Father, is near that justifieth me, who will contend with me. Let us stand together, who is mine adversary. Let him come near to me. Isaiah 50 verse 8 Messiah's death for the sins of his people was prophesied in several places in the Bible. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself.
Daniel 9 verse 26. Christ died for the sins of Israel as predicted. The reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. Psalm 69 verse 9. Here is another example is, he was wounded for our transgressions, Israel's, he was bruised for our iniquities, Israel's, Isaiah 53 verse 5. Jesus Christ knew he would be crucified, Psalm 22 verse 16, John 3 verse 14. In order to redeem his people, destroy Satan and death, the Lord Jesus Christ had to put on a human body. Forasmuch then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Hebrews 2 verse 14. Out of love, the Son of God willingly laid down his life. I lay down my life, that I may take it again. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. John 10 verses 17 and 18. Before the cross, his disciples understood none of these things. Luke 18 verse 34. Pertaining to his death on the cross and resurrection even after Jesus told them, they shall scourge him and put him to death and the third day he shall rise again, Luke 18 verse 33. Satan knew that Christ was to die, that Israel was supposed to sacrifice the Lamb of God by faith. Israel was to bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar, as Psalm 118 verse 27 said. This is the psalm the people cried out at his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Matthew 21 verse 9. Satan was able to convince Israel to call for his death in unbelief and demand that he would be crucified. Satan thought that this would cause God to reject his people. The king dies for his people. While still on the cross, the first cry of Jesus to the Father was not for himself, but, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Meaning they are crucifying me out of ignorance, Luke 23 verse 34. There is an escape clause for sin done in ignorance in the Jewish law, Leviticus chapter 4. At first glance, it may have appeared to Satan that the cross was his greatest triumph, but it was his demise. Jesus Christ bruised the serpent's head. It is finished for many and all. In the Gospels, it says that Christ came to give his life for many, Israel, to give his life a ransom for many, Matthew 20 verse 28. But through Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, we learn that Christ came to be a ransom for all, who gave himself a ransom for all, to be testified in due time, 1 Timothy 2 verse 6. Clearly many and all are not the same. Is there, therefore, a contradiction in the Bible? No, although there appears to be a contradiction, there is no contradiction, because of the understanding revealed to Paul by our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven. The secret will clear up all apparent contradictions. Through Paul, the words Jesus spoke when he died on the cross, it is finished, John 19 verse 30, have a broader meaning, because he had completed all that was necessary to pay for all sins for all time. Jesus had the faith to die on the cross for everyone. Jesus believed the scriptures, and because of his faith, Jesus knew his father would raise him up. He had the faith to pay the debt humanity could not pay. He is risen. As prophesied in Psalms 2, 22, 16, 69, 110, Isaiah 53, and elsewhere, the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ was the greatest event in history. The first day of the week women came to the tomb bringing spices to anoint the body of Jesus and saw an angel. And the angel answered and said unto the women, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Matthew 28 verses 5 and 6. Jesus had given Israel the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 12 verse 40. The women told his disciples this news. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb. It was empty. 
Unfortunately, Israel still, even after his resurrection, did not believe in Jesus Christ. Sadly, he came unto his own, Israel, and his own received him not, John 1 verse 11. Please notice that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the continuation of the prophetic program. God gave the nation of Israel one more chance to receive the Lord Jesus as their Messiah and King through the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost, as the reader will discover next. One-Year Extension of Mercy for Israel The prophetic clock, according to Daniel's timeline, stopped on Palm Sunday, but Israel received a bonus year of mercy from God. In addition to asking the Father to forgive them because of their ignorance while on the cross, Jesus had also pleaded with the Father to give his people one more year to repent and receive him as their Messiah. A certain man, God the Father, had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit, faith, thereon, and found none. Then said he, God the Father, unto the dresser of his vineyard, God the Son, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, Israel and find none, cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he, the son, answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, give Israel one more year, till I shall dig about it, and dung, fertilize by the power of the Holy Spirit, it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down, cut off Israel for a season. Luke 13 verses 6-9 but Peter and the disciples of Christ, the little remnant, the little flock, did have faith in him, so the kingdom was taken from the unbelieving nation of Israel and given to the remnant of believing Israel. Therefore say I, Jesus, unto you, the religious leaders of the nation of Israel, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, the little flock, bringing forth the fruits, faith, thereof. Matthew 21 verse 43. The little flock, believing remnant, received the kingdom, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, Luke 12 verse 32. When Peter asked Jesus what he would receive for his faithfulness, Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration, when the earth is regenerated in the millennium, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye, the twelve apostles, also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, Matthew 19 verse 28. Three times a year Israel was to keep a feast to the Lord. These feasts are a picture of God's plan to redeem them. Christ has already fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread, and firstfruits, held in Abib, the first month. The next, Pentecost, 50 days later, was fulfilled in Acts 2. The Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles, in the seventh month, will be fulfilled when Israel is gathered into their land, the nation is forgiven, and Messiah rules and lives with them. The final feasts, as we will learn, have been postponed. The Renewed Offer of the Earthly Kingdom Jesus had warned the leaders of the nation of Israel not to commit the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, but they were about to do it anyway. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Matthew 12 verses 31 and 32. Jesus Christ is ready to ascend into heaven. After his resurrection, Jesus Christ spent 40 days with his disciples preparing them for their great commission. Just before his ascension into heaven while on the Mount of Olives, he spoke to them about the earthly kingdom of God, Jesus, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Acts 1 verse 3, Jesus told his disciples to stay in Jerusalem till they received the Holy Ghost, Ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence, Acts 1 verse 5. The disciples had a question, they were interested in knowing if the kingdom on earth would be set up at this time. They asked him, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Acts 1 verse 6. Jesus answered that it was not for them to know, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. The time of the kingdom on earth is up to the Father, Acts 1 verse 7. 
Jesus told the little flock of believers to spread the news of the king and his kingdom after they were empowered by the Holy Spirit, in both the south and north of Israel, and then to the rest of the earth, ye shall. Receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth, Acts 1 verse 8. Then they saw him rise up and disappear in the clouds, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight, Acts 1 verse 9. Jesus ascended into heaven leaving Peter and the little flock in charge. Jesus went into a far country, Luke 19 verse 12. The king is in exile seated at the right hand of the father, making intercession for his people until his enemies are made his footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Psalms 110 verse 1 The Coming of the Holy Spirit Ten days later the Holy Ghost descended from heaven on the 120 gathered believers. The coming of the Holy Spirit on the believers in the upper room was so loud and windy that the Jews, who were in Jerusalem from other countries to celebrate the holy day, came running to see what happened. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the fulfillment of the purpose of that day, they were all with one accord in one place, the upper room. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2 verses 1 to 4. Curious about the wind and loud noise, the men of Israel in Jerusalem for Pentecost gathered to hear what had happened as the believers came outside. The Holy Ghost's renewed offer of the earthly kingdom. The men of Israel were surprised that everyone understood what was being said in their own language. Acts 2 verses 6 to 8, they wondered what it meant, some mocked saying the men were drunk. Peter stood up and explained that the men were not drunk, but this is that which had been prophesied by Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Acts 2 verses 16 and 17, Peter preached the gospel of the kingdom on Pentecost. Peter preached to the Jews that Jesus proved by miracles and signs that he was the Messiah and the king to sit on the throne of David. The bad news was that they had killed him, but God had raised Jesus up again, ye men of Israel, Jesus of Nazareth, by miracles and wonders and signs. Him ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Acts 2 verses 22 to 24. Peter said that David, being a prophet, had told them that God would raise up their king, raise up Christ to sit on his, David's, throne. Acts 2 verse 30. The men of Israel, devastated with grief, asked what they should do. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, What shall we do? Acts 2 verse 37 Peter answered, Repent, change your mind, and believe God that Jesus is the prophesied King of the Jews, the Messiah, and be baptized, in water, to demonstrate your faith and be priests, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, forgiveness, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the power to witness and receive sign gifts, Acts 2 verse 38. It is important to notice that Peter continued to preach repent and be baptized, just like John the Baptist. Peter called the Jews a royal priesthood and holy nation, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. God's spokesman Moses said, If then, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, ye shall be a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation, Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6. 3,000 believed that Jesus was the king who would set up the earthly kingdom, and were water baptized that day. Next, 
Peter did his first apostolic miracle of healing the lame man at the temple gate. The amazed Jews listened to Peter in the courtyard of the temple. Peter said that he knew that the people and their leaders killed Jesus out of ignorance, but if they would change their minds about what God said about Jesus their sins would be removed and God would send Jesus back to rule the kingdom and restore the earth, just like all the prophets have said. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, make things like they were when Adam was on earth, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Acts 3 verses 19-21 The healing of the lame man at the temple was a sign for Israel. God had spoken about dominion and ruling of the earth since the days of Adam. No one knew anything about the secret God had been keeping for more than 4,000 years. Another 5,000 men of Israel attending the temple, where no Gentiles were allowed, believed. But the religious leaders of Israel, who represented the nation, did not believe. Peter and the others were arrested several times and were able to preach Jesus to them, but they still rejected him as their Messiah. As we will learn, the body of Christ is not to preach the coming of the earthly kingdom, but Christ crucified for all people. Our blessed hope is the rapture and to live with Christ forever in heaven. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 The Stoning of Stephen A year after the cross, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9, Stephen, a bold Holy Spirit-filled member of the believing remnant, stood up. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he preached to the Jewish religious leaders. But they refused to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. They killed Stephen Rejah the Holy Ghost. This the gloss of the Holy Ghost, which Jesus had warned them about, Matthew 12 verses 31 and 32. The leaders of Israel refused to believe Stephen, rejecting the Holy Ghost. Stephen had told the religious leaders of Israel that they didn't believe Joseph, nor Moses until they saw them a second time, just like Israel will believe Jesus Christ the second time. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, this Moses whom they refused, the same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer. Acts 7 verses 13 and 35 Stephen saw Christ in heaven standing, ready to judge Israel and pour out his wrath. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, Acts 7 verses 51 and 55, 56. Why did Stephen see Jesus standing? Because God was ready to pour out his wrath, the Lord standeth up to judge the people, Isaiah 3 verse 13. The religious leaders of Israel were furious because of what Stephen, filled with the Holy Ghost, had told them. They pushed Stephen out of Jerusalem and threw stones on him till he died. Saul, Paul, watched the coats of the religious leaders of the nation of Israel while they cast him, Stephen, out of the city, and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul, Acts 7 verse 58. The nation of Israel refused the renewed offer of the earthly kingdom by the Holy Ghost. Now their time was up. They had three strikes, and now they were out. First, they rejected the Father when they allowed John the Baptist to be beheaded. Second, they rejected the Son when they crucified their Messiah. Third, they rejected the Holy. Ghost speaking through Stephen when they stoned him. It seemed as if God's plans for his chosen nation had all failed. Satan probably thought he had won this time. Saul hated the church. With zeal for God, Saul persecuted the believing remnant, the little flock. Saul was consenting unto his, Stephen's, death. 
And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Acts 8 verses 1 and 3. Note, a church is just a called out assembly, a congregation. Three are mentioned in the Bible. The church in the wilderness, Acts 7 verse 38, led by Moses, the church of the little flock at Jerusalem, Matthew 16 verse 18, Acts 8 verse 1, and the church, the body of Christ, Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23, Colossians 1 verse 18. Saul told King Agrippa, In Jerusalem, many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Acts 26 verses 10 and 11. Because the leaders of the nation of Israel did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, they could not be the channel of blessing at this time. Judgment was pending, but instead of pouring out his prophesied wrath, God surprised everyone, even Satan and his fallen angels. God had kept a secret that no one knew up until this point in history. God had kept this secret in himself since before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1 verse 4. God did something totally unprophesied, he saved his worst enemy, who had watched the coats of those who stoned Stephen, and persecuted the little flock, Saul of Tarsus. Now Jesus interrupts prophecy and inserts the mystery, the yellow part on the timeline below. Knowledge of God Time passed F. 2 colon 11 12, Law, Genesis 12 colon 1 3, 13 colon 14 18 15 colon 3 21, 17 colon 1 8, Nationland, Adam Moses X. 19, 3 6 Esa 61, 6. I pet. 2, 9. Promise. For U.S. David. Throne. 11, Tim 3, 16. LK 1, 31 33. John Baptist.